G'day guys, Sam from the Cybermen here. Today's best of one battles is me playing Red Peeler versus a Green Freezer um, hand destruction player. Um, this is a Red Peeler deck I'm working on. I will probably put a deck profile out soon, but it's geared towards awakening turn one, turn two. Um, you want to awaken turn two usually because you can untap two energy, but if you need to awaken turn one, you can if you get the right cards. Um, so I'll leave it with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy. Cheers. Alrighty, so my opponent just getting set up here. So I'm obviously PLAF on the right there um, versus Hand Destruction Freezer. Unfortunately, he didn't have a mat. I really hate um, seeing people play without a mat, it seems. Um, it just hurts me inside. Anyway, what can you do? Uh, he's going first, tapping one and playing the one drop searcher, so he looks at the... Oh no, it looks like I went first, sorry. Um, we just missed that part. Um, charge and pass. Uh, usually with this PLF deck you want to play a one drop first turn. Um, usually the PLF searcher, just to guarantee your turn to awaken. Um, but sometimes I will do this, so I'll just negate the first attack with the Videl. Um, it's really good, this is a good negate in this deck because uh, you get to put a body on board for your Awaken, which you need to, and also it's good in this current meta because of Gotenks, um, it's not a like extra card, right? So I don't run any extra cards in this deck, um, so you can't. they don't get the extra draw from that. Um, attacking and dealing double strike with Kaba, then playing Bardock. So now I'm able to awaken if I want to. Another thing that you can do here is that, as you can see, the Legic in the drop area there. Um, I knew my opponent wasn't going to have a battle card on board because of his auto. He gets rid of the battle card, so I used the negate instead. But if you don't, then Legic's a better option because it gives you another attack. Um, and then you can um, play him for free and then play your Bardock and play a one drop and that's even turn one. So if you go second, turn one, you can awaken if you need to. Um, the ideal play here is to get a unison out because then you can attack with these cards and then KO them and give your, un or, sorry, drop them, give your unison um, triple attack. And it's just putting out so much pressure. Um, already I've gone with the double two double strikes this turn um, and now I'm going in with the 20K leader swing I'm searching for my um, unison here, I believe, because I couldn't. F I don't think I could find it, um, sadly. So you want to get your unison on board. So you already hit. I've already done four damage um, on my first attacking turn, um, and if with your unison's triple attack, you're potentially, you know, obviously they'll block it, but you're potentially going with another three damage, and then obviously the tower there, critical, another damage. Um, it's pretty insane. If you get, if you have your Vegeta Unison, you can buff one of your 5Ks. Um, if you happen to play the 5K Searcher and attack with that, so that's a 10K as well. Uh, all of those things. I mean, just very powerful. Um, this deck will run very differently in the Store Champs meta, um, as you can imagine. You know, two of the cards on board there and one in the drop. Those cards you can't include, but the uh, so he's he's using his unison to drop the Dodoria play it then draw a card off the uh, freezes army healing pod then draw a card off um, the unison now he's using his skill to KO the Dodoria and I drop a card um, the one problem that you do have with the PLAF deck is having low hand size because you play nearly your whole hand really quickly um, so it's super aggro but if you can't kill them quickly you can die very easily um, but as you see here I'm 15k and I am um, is that critical? I didn't know that was critical anyway 
I'm 15k and I'm all, I was still on seven life there. So the only life I took was from Kaba. <clears throat> um, so as I was saying, yeah, you would play very differently in store champs. Um, but it still can awaken turn two uh, if you get, but you have to use your one drops to do that. Um, it's very, very strong. I think it's going to be a contender for store champs. Um, but I really think in the current meta, this deck is pretty good. If you can work out the kinks, um, this is was the first time I've ever played it this game. Um, I've played it a bunch of times since then. But if you can work out the kinks with hand size, maybe some sane instincts. I know that's my answer to everything. Um, that might help. Um, they are going to be reprinted soon, so that'll help. So he is using the freezer to KO my butter, which is a bit sad. I'm using the one drop P left, which searches the top five for a Earthling with an energy cost of four or less, or a unison with a specified cost of four. Uh, now that the only unison that that's the Vegito. Um, I don't use that in this deck. I run Vegeta and I run Sin Shenron. Um, four, you just don't get to four energy in this deck very often. Um, and if you do, Vegeta is not giving you that much value that you need, um, and you can get from the other cards much, much more easily. Vegeta's the best now that Bandai've put that um, Unison information sheet out um, where the skills are only removed from Unisons when they lose a card marker, not when they add one. You can attack with it three times with your leader skill and give um, each time it gets a marker and each time it negs 5k from one of your opponent's cards. Great for clearing the board. Um, I played against Dredge Coup. Um, this same day, and he kept trying to put the one dot drop blockers to um, help him awaken, but they need to be KO'd, and my unison would just neg it. Um, it's really good in that way. And triple attack board clear. As you can see here, I've got no cards in hand. Um, that's just what happens in this deck because you're playing everything. There's barely any high cost cards. Um, everything's kind of two two cost or less. Uh, all those um, PLAF machine parts as you can see come out for um for two energy or one if you get the shoe that plays a two drop the plaf promo is really good in this deck because he's not unique and he also negs something when he leaves even if you use your leader skill to make him leave so i've just put a lot of pressure on there i've got one card in hand for my life um and passing turn the thing with having not that much, not that many cards in hand, and it didn't worry me too much, is that um, I have a lot of life still, and my opponent is still only on three energy, especially in this deck, you're not playing very heavy hitters, you're trying to drop their hand and kill them slowly with crits. Um, I think the mistake he made here was not attacking the Kaba. Um, a lot of people will see the Kabber as a way of them taking my life because I'm going to attack with them and take life, but you sh especially at two life there, you should never leave a double striker on board if you can help it, especially one that's 5k, very easy to kill. Um, he's just wiping my board of all 15ks. Choosing which one. Um, so in this, I think, I'm trying to think of what my biggest card in this Pulaf build is. It's more a swarm type deck. I do have the six drop Pulaf machine in there, um, which comes out for three. So three cost. Um, I have the four drop Yamcha, but again, you don't, I don't think I've ever played it for four. You're only playing it off the um, Bulma from the drop area. Um, that's probably the biggest card because that guy's wins games. Okay, so I tapped one and played Shu, and then he killed the Shu. Honestly, he should have killed... My, again, he had a chance to get rid of that double strike and he didn't do it. Um, attacking Unison, I'd say. Yeah. And then attacking... 
Unison again. Just get, get rid of the Unison in case I don't kill him this turn. Um, swinging leader with the Saiyan Kappa. So again, this is giving me cards. He's doing hand destruction, but I'm able to keep refilling my cards because he hasn't killed that Kappa. That Kappa came out, you know, right at the start of the game. And he's still there. 15 double strike. I think I was comfortable that I, I could survive um, another turn, so I was happy to wait. Two energy up. Um, I'm pretty sure I have Topo in my hand, that's why. Two cards, so. Which, luckily, even though he makes me drop a card, I can counter with Topo first and drop the card that I was going to drop anyway. And he passed turn. So it should be game here, I'd say. Two cards in hand, like, I don't know, unless he had Dormant Potential unleashed. That would probably help, because he could KO uh, the Kappa if he was smart, but I think I'm just going to go for game here. Take a life. very cautious in this meta as well. I feel like there's always something that can kill you. Kill your battle cards. Um, so that's 25k. Make me drop the other card, which was the unison. Annoying. Swing later. Checking, I think, because because you, you draw a card first, you can actually play the card that you drew. So that gives me another combo piece, and hopefully something else. So. 25, single strike. So it looks, I mean, it's very close to in game here. Wow. Getting rid of one, swing leader. 15, 20, 25k. One card in hand. There you go. Um, he left, yeah, so this deck is good. At this point um, that you're watching now, it still needs to be refined a bit, um, but I have been messing with it. This deck, I've been take, adding in things from old sets and then taking them out to put, try and test um, with our last video, like testing store champs, so it's a bit all over the place, but I'll do a deck profile um, on my unlimited, uh, whatever we're calling a normal standard constructed format now, um, so you can see how that goes. Um, anyway, until next time. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date on all the Dragon Ball Super content. Um, we want to thank Grand J Games for all their support and remind you to use the code CyberMan5 at GrandJGames.com for 5% off all your singles needs. Cheers.